Laser hair removal should be one of the safest procedures you can get done. However, in reality, it has the highest complication rate of burns and post-inflammatory hyperpigmentation. The reason for this is because the service is highly unregulated in the United States, and oftentimes you may end up in a situation where the person performing the laser hair removal is not adequately trained, doesn't have the knowledge or understanding of a very powerful machine. Other times you may choose to go to a doctor's office. Not everything that's best for the doctor is best for the patient and not everything that's best for the patient is best for the doctor. So in this video, I'm going to discuss how you can find the best possible laser hair removal office for the best results, maximum comfort and safety. Before I get started, if you're new to my channel, welcome. I started this channel about a year ago and I focus on education regarding skincare and aesthetic procedures. Feel free to subscribe to my channel and to help the algorithm grow, if you would please like and comment on this video, it helps the video get seen and it helps my channel grow, so I would really appreciate it. Many hair removal services do not offer actual laser light for hair removal. They offer IPL or intense pulse light. And this is an important piece of information because the light system of delivery and killing the hair, the root of the hair, is completely different from actual laser light. The term laser stands for light amplification by stimulated emission radiation. And what that basically means is that you have a very specific narrow column of light that only contains a single wavelength. It is extremely homogeneous. It is only one wavelength that is emitted and it doesn't spread out and scatter the way light does. It is oriented. If you've ever seen a laser pointer, you know that pointer points in a tiny circle and never changes its shape. And that is very important because when you're doing laser hair removal, you, if you're using a true laser, you have full control over the type of light and the depth of penetration of that laser into the skin, which is extremely important because lasers target chromophores. Chromophores are the substances that the laser light bursts. So in this particular case, the lasers designed for hair removal target dark pigment. Whether you're wearing black nail polish or you have a black hair follicle root in your skin, as soon as the light hits that dark pigment, it deposits so much heat, it essentially just bursts and dissipates that black pigment, and that's how it destroys the hair follicle. This is also why it doesn't work in blonde hair or gray hair, and we'll get to red hair later. So IPL devices are less expensive to purchase as the practitioner, and they do work for hair removal, but they are not as effective. So someone who says, I had laser hair removal and it's supposed to be six to eight session and it took 15, they may have had IPL, not actual laser hair removal. That's the one thing to keep in mind because places often won't tell you that it's not actual laser light that they're using. Both IPL and laser light can burn and cause post-inflammatory hyperpigmentation. The main difference is the effectiveness of the procedure where actual lasers are superior to IPL. But that reflects in the price and the service because oftentimes IPL treatments are less expensive. But don't get fooled and pay for a laser service if you're getting an IPL. IPL treatment. Within the laser family, there are various laser wavelengths that can target dark pigment or melanin. And the reason why this or this technology can cause burns is if you think about a laser that's targeting dark pigment, if someone is of a deeper skin tone, they are at high risk of getting burnt. And also because the laser delivers so much heat, 
just about anyone can get post-inflammatory hyperpigmentation. And of course, the darker your skin or certain ethnicities like Asians have a higher propensity for post-inflammatory hyperpigmentation. Because the laser targets pigment, which is what can cause burns in people of a deeper skin tone, the ND YAG laser is a laser that's safer for darker skin tones because it penetrates deeper. So in a way what it does is it bypasses the skin and it delivers the energy at the hair root, keeping the skin safer. Meanwhile, cooling the skin usually with a Zimmer machine, which is just this blowing uh, machine that blows cold air. In people of a lighter skin tone, the ND YAG doesn't need to be used, they can use uh, a different laser that deposits more energy more superficially because it doesn't heat up like colored skin but because it does generate a lot of heat you still always need to apply a cooling system regardless of skin color now before i go on i need to say this video is not sponsored none of my videos are ever sponsored but because I'm going to be raving about one particular laser, you may wonder. Um, I've always paid for my laser hair removal. I've never had a complimentary service and I've never had any company reach out to me asking me to promote them in any way. But I have had laser hair removal over the years. I know what the experience is like with different laser systems. And I know, and I've done my research for this video and there is one laser system that surpasses all others and really there's nothing else like it regardless of skin tone which is incredible and this device is called um, the brand company name is called alma and the device is called soprano ice this is a laser hair removal machine that actually has two very sophisticated technologies the first is called Trio Cluster Diode Technology, and what it has is three different laser lights in one handpiece. There's an ND YAG, there's an, which is a 1064, there's an Alexandrite 755, and there is a diode 810 nanometer laser in this handpiece. And the other technology that makes this surpass all other lasers is the in motion technology, which means in every laser, system usually you have the stamping technique so you deliver energy you move over you deliver energy you move over and there's an overlap but you basically deliver all of the energy that's going to remove the hair in one blow and it feels like an uncomfortable usually people describe it as a snapping band this particular technology has continuous motion so that follicle gets heated up gradually there's no blowing zimmer machine necessary because the tip of the handpiece is actually ice cold so as it slides over the skin it cools the skin and slowly heating up the area so whenever it feels too hot or like it's getting too hot the patient has time to say this is getting uncomfortable, it's too warm, and there's time to stop long before a burn can happen. It's, it's very controlled and it's very slow and it's extremely safe, but again, in the right hands. So let's move on and see how do you know if the person who's about to do your laser hair removal should be touching a laser and whether you're safe in their hands. Let's begin with the consultation where I think you can get a very good gauge whether you should leave and never return or leave your money there and get your laser hair removal. So the first thing is there should be a complimentary consultation where you should be asked some questions that are quite important. They should ask you when you've had exposure to the sun, how tanned you are, what medications you're on, if you've had laser hair removal before, because these questions are important to determine your treatment. Another important question is, are you pregnant? Then after that, they should offer a patch test where they will do the treatment on a very small surface area and you can see what it feels like, make sure your skin doesn't react and you can wait and see that the hair, you know, check that the hair falls out in two to three weeks. After that, you can go ahead and commit to the treatment. Another important question that you should be asked during, during the consultation is, 
whether or not you have any tattoos in the area of interest because that can cause severe burns so they need to know and if you are on any fake tanners or bronzers because you should not have those you shouldn't be using those just before the treatment you essentially you want your skin to be as pale as possible for you to minimize the risk of burns other important things they should uh, inform you about is pre and post procedure care they should tell you that you shouldn't wax before the treatment and they should give you very detailed instruction about post care which lotions you should stay away from if you're getting a facial laser hair removal that you shouldn't have peels and you shouldn't have procedures done on your skin after the laser hair removal so you should feel like it was a thorough evaluation where you exchanged a sufficient amount of information where they know enough about you to treat you safely and you feel comfortable knowing what to do before the treatment and after the treatment you can ask them Number one, what type of laser do you have? If they just give you a name and it doesn't mean anything to you, you can go ahead and say, is it a laser? Is it an IPL? And then they tell you it's a laser. You can say what wavelength is it and what's the name of it? And then you can go home and look it up. Other things that are absolutely fair to ask is, when was the last time you gave someone a burn? Have you ever given anyone a burn? Tell me about it. And that is a fair question. They should not be defensive and they should absolutely provide you that information. Now moving on to the effectiveness. So once we're talking about actual laser light hair removal, the different wavelengths I've mentioned, the different machines and brands out there, they are all effective. They all take anywhere from six to eight sessions roughly. Um, but the comfort level is, is what makes the Soprano eyes different from all of the others. All of the others, you may require some numbing cream. You may have these snapping bands that are quite uncomfortable. But if you choose this um, Soprano device, it is by far, without a doubt, the most comfortable and effective laser hair removal treatment that exists. There's one more thing I want to add in terms of personal experience to the six to eight sessions to complete your treatment uh, philosophy. That is an average and that is not a rule. So from my experience, I probably had 12 sessions on my legs. I had very coarse, thick hair and it's now completely gone. I only have peach fuzz and probably need to shave twice a year only not to have like the little blonde peach fuzz sort of shine and reflect sunlight in the summer but my legs are always smooth and i essentially don't really need to shave sometimes i get a few hairs around my knees and so i could go for a touch up here and there but it's basically a done deal permanent permanent hair removal Whereas under my arms, I've probably had it done 20 times and I've had, I would say, an 80% reduction, but whatever is left will never, ever go away. I have tried getting, um, you know, trying different time schedules for the hair removal and it just always grows back. Like I said, only 20% of it, but that was a permanent reduction not a permanent removal so everybody is different you have to try it to know but yes you can have permanent hair removal sometimes you need annual touch-ups and sometimes it's just a permanent reduction so why would any doctor's office buy lasers that are more uncomfortable and painful and have the snapping bands well, sometimes it's because doctors don't know all the brands of lasers out there. And oftentimes it's the sales rep that shows up at the office and tells you how great their technology is. And they're never going to say, but there's another competitor who actually has a better laser. So sometimes they don't know. Other times it's, it's money. Very often laser hair removal systems are part of a unit that has other hand pieces for other treatments so you buy one huge laser machine you pay a lot of money and it has you can offer five different services the soprano ice that's all it does it doesn't do anything else and it's very expensive 
So you have to be willing to invest and care about providing the most comfortable experience, which is gonna cost the office a lot of money. And oftentimes this is why they choose a less expensive laser that also does other things. So those would be the reasons why anyone would choose other types of devices. Sometimes they're loyal to one brand or maybe they get a discount on a brand because they buy X amount of lasers from that brand. So they're committed. So that's why I say what's best for the doctor isn't always what's best for the patient. So it's your job to find the best service for you. And there's lots of med spas out there, lots of doctors. You can Google how to find um, the treatment that you're looking for. So that was the purpose of this video. Now I'm gonna to get to some questions that I got on my Instagram when I posted that I would be filming this. And the first one was safety and pregnancy. In general, the rule of thumb in medicine for aesthetics is don't touch pregnant patients. And the reason for that is that no studies have ever been done checking if these aesthetic procedures are safe in pregnancy. So better safe than sorry. It's better to wait, it's only nine months, and then proceed with the treatments. So even though it may be safe, generally no one will do it. Occasionally some providers will do legs or something far away from the abdomen, but they won't do a bikini in a pregnancy. So that depends on how comfortable the practitioner giving the service feels about it. And you can absolutely discuss that in a consultation. Another question I got was whether laser hair removal can affect your freckles. So let's talk about melanin for one second. We have two different types of melanin. The first one is called eumelanin and it's the brown to black pigment. This is the one laser light loves. So if you have freckles that are dark brownish, they will lighten with laser hair removal. The other type of melanin is called pheomelanin and this is on the reddish yellow spectrum and laser light doesn't really get attracted to this one. This is the reason why if you are a ginger, if you have red hair, laser hair removal generally doesn't work. It's always worth a try, especially if you're more auburn or a little darker, and I always say the patch test will answer the question. So you can safely find out if laser hair removal would work for you without paying any money. You get a patch test done and you see if any of the hair falls out, but generally, the laser does not really work well on the pheomelanin. And because laser light likes the dark brown to black melanin, this is the reason why it doesn't work on blondes and it doesn't work on gray hair because gray hair is essentially losing its pigment. So you really need to have the eumelanin in order to have effective results. I hope I've answered all of your questions and I hope I've made you feel like you know what to ask and what you're looking for, how to find a good and safe laser hair removal experience. And I hope that there's a Soprano um, ice somewhere near you because if you're afraid of pain or discomfort, it is by far the most comfortable experience you can have. So I hope that helps. I'll see you guys in the next video. If you have any questions, drop them down in the comments and I'll see you next time.